I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to get those editing effects for that short form content. This style was definitely pioneered by Dr. Clips, I wanna say. He was actually on our podcast recently and he started this trend with the group Flyanna Boss and he really had this unique editing style. And this became really popular for a lot of short form content. If you wanna check out the full podcast, I'm gonna link it all over. So if you wanna hear our interview with Dr. Clips on some tips and tricks for viral social media clips, I definitely recommend you checking that out. So I've been doing some of these clips and I have kind of picked up some of my favorite effects to use. I've mainly been editing in After Effects, so this is gonna be an After Effects specific tutorial. Uh, Dr. Clips, actually, he reveals in our podcast clip. But so, you do all the effects in Resolve? Yeah, I do 100% oh, of the editing in Resolve. Whoa, I don't use After Effects at all. That's crazy. Let's hop into After Effects, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. So we're in Premiere, and I have my clip right here. Let's go ahead and play it. Shot this on a gimbal. I actually mounted my camera vertically. So film it vertical because you're gonna have way more pixels and just higher quality so that you can do all these zoom effects. If you film horizontally and crop later, you, you can already just see. You have this whole image and then you're only using that much. Whereas if you're filming vertically, that's everything you have to work with, right? So first thing I like to do before I hop into After Effects is I like to color grade it. I'm just, I have a conversion LUT here and then I have some random LUT right here. Did some light adjustments and this honestly looks good enough. It's, we're not, we're not doing a music video here, guys. We're doing a clip. We're doing a clip for Instagram that's gonna play a couple times on someone's feed and it's gone forever, right? So, we do want to make it as viral and like as catchy as possible, but at the same time, like it's this is just you know practice. This is like getting your reps in, right? Uh, so we're gonna right click now and we're gonna hit replace with After Effects composition. We're going to After Effects. Don't get nervous. I'm gonna hold your hand. I'm not even that good at After Effects. Kind of a beginner here, but we're gonna make it happen. First thing I like to do is make a pre comp. Control Shift C. And then I'm gonna move all the attributes into the new composition, boom. So now we don't see the uh, Luma tree anymore. If I double click into there, we're going into the pre-comp. If you're not familiar with this, this is basically like nesting in Premiere Pro. So you can see there's, uh, there's like the nested clip with the Luma tree. We'll come back to this clip for like uh, certain effects like rotoscoping and things like that. But this is the uh, where I like to do a lot of my zooms and stuff. So first thing I wanna add is I wanna, um, in effects, I'm gonna search um, CC rep. And I'm also gonna hit S on my keyboard and I'm gonna scale this down to like 50, okay? Then what I like to do is I like to just drag all these out, right? And you can kinda see what I'm going for here, right? And 50 is about good for me. And then I like to change this to unfold. So you can see it's almost like seamless. It looks pretty good, right? Quick coffee break out of the Cinepax coffee mug. So we can even scale it down a little bit more if we want. And let's boost everything up. There we go. Let's say we let's say we want to zoom really far out. I'm just gonna zoom all the way out, right? What I like to do now is I like to keyframe position, scale, and rotation. And then once you, so you just hit uh, S, R, and P, and then all those pop up. And then once you keyframe them, you hit the little stopwatch there, hit U. Hit U again, boom, now we're in the keyframes. So what I like to do is, um, this is the original position. I'm gonna drag that out. I'm gonna hit F9. Uh, and then that's gonna make it smooth. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom all the way out. And sometimes I even like to start with like a little rotation, right? And then like, let's say there's a little bit of black there that's on the left side. So I just, zoop, all good. And then now we're gonna zoom in, but honestly, let's zoom in a little more. Let's center him up and let's rotate the other way. So we kind of get this bounce effect, right? So here we go. This is the intro shot. Let's maybe stretch that out just a little bit. I'll mute the clip. And then so it's missing something, right? Like why does that, it looks okay, but what it's missing is motion blur. So hit the, check this box right here and let's see the difference. You can see, honestly, we probably could have brought that closer with motion blur. It'll smooth it out a little bit, right? So I think we're still missing some of the left right there. So I'm gonna, and you can see this already looks 
really cool, right? So at any point in time, like during the song, you can zoom out whenever you want, right? So like I could zoom back out this far. And the cool thing is too, now you can, you have free range motion. If I wanna do like a full 360, I usually do this on parts of songs, like if the artist doesn't know the lyric or if it's just getting kind of boring, I'll just hit, uh, I'll just type in one on the rotation. And then right here, I'll just zoom out a little bit right there. So let's see what that looks like. So we're right back to like the original frame. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna find like where we want it to start. So I double click in, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, I'm gonna make a cut. And I just wanna do a small section. So I wanna do this little dance. And then I want it to end like maybe right about there. Control, sh and then I'm gonna double click in, Control Shift D. This is on our original clip, remember, with the Lumetri right there. Um, so we'll play that. Very cool, I'm gonna duplicate it, right? Um, so that's our Roto right there. Uh, let's be organized, guys. Come on, let's name that Roto. Let's name this background. Back for background. Cool. What we want to do is we want to make sure we are at full resolution before we Roto. We're going to double click in and we're going to grab this tool up here. I'm not going to teach you guys how to Roto brush, but with Roto 3.0, it's so easy. Honestly, for these reels, I just do the first frame, I roto everything out, and then I just jump to the last frame, let Roto 3.0 do its magic, and usually it's good enough for what I'm doing. Okay, you can see, perfect. It's If I zoomed in, it probably wouldn't look that good, but it's also a wide shot, so not a big deal. We're gonna hit freeze, let that do its thing. Okay, now that we're frozen, you just wanna click back up here and then so if I go ahead and turn off this back layer, boom, we have a lovely cutout. By the way, if you see this little bar popping up, I'm using the Video Copilot um, tool. I'll link it down below. It's like some After Effects, everyone who uses After Effects uses it. Saves you a lot of time. You just hit Command, Space Bar, and boom, you can type in any effects you wanna apply to the clip that it saves you a lot of time than going up here and clicking. So Command, Space, um, we just throw on a glow, right? Boom, he's glowing, you know, that's already like just him. He's glowing, that's cool. Uh, but we're gonna take a step further. I'm gonna duplicate, uh, Control D, we have Roto 2. Uh, let's put Roto 2 in the middle. And then um, on Roto 2, let's go ahead and add, I'm actually gonna keyframe him. So I'm gonna turn on motion blur, just so I don't forget. And then when he starts dancing right there, I'm gonna hit position. We're on the original right now, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard just so I stay on the same plane. I can't move up and down, and then boom, right there. So if we play that, uh, hit F9 as well. Boom. We can make it a little slower, right? Like a, whoo. and then let's do it again. Let's hit U. Uh, let's go back to the keyframe, but let's move that one over there, and then let's drag these, and let's just offset them a little bit. So it's like boom, boom. Let me mute that, sorry guys. So we have two versions of him popping out, right? Um, we can also add effects to these, like um, Deep Glow is pretty good. Uh, that's a paid plugin. And we can throw on some tint to that, right? We can, we can make them red if we want, sure, why not? And I'm just doing something real simple here, you know? Uh, he could still be glowing if we want, but maybe we leave him, you know? We could also enable the glow at a certain point. We could turn that to zero. And then when he pops out, then he the glow turns on, right? And then we do the same thing over here. We click that one, exposure. And then the glow would turn on when he slides out. So we turn that to zero. So now what we can do that we have these effects, uh, we also wanna have like some type of out point. So under the roto, we would take the position right here and we would copy these, paste these, and then if we just, we would basically flip flop them. So then we do the same thing on the bottom and we would flip flop them. And let's just line them up. Okay. So check this out. This is what we have now. So it spins around 
and we have the effects just like that. But the cool thing is that since we pre-comp this and we have that uh, crazy expanded version, we can still do keyframes on top of this. Um, and we could zoom out as far as we want. We could zoom in as far as we want to. Um, and I feel like this just opens up a lot of possibilities. So it might be a little laggy at this point. So you may want to, yeah, drop down back to a quarter. Uh, we could zoom out here a little bit, you know, and then kind of playing with the rotation. And then I would probably want to even just like drag this. And then when I want the zoom in to be right when all of them right there, see that, that looks good. Um, one other thing I would do is I would add an adjustment layer and I would probably create a layer and I would just put like Sapphire glow on here and just add some like little hits, right? So let's find right when they morph into his body, I would just add a big flash right there and I'm gonna hit you and then I'm gonna go up a couple pages. I'm gonna go frame by frame, use page up and page down to go frame by frame and then back down to zero. This just adds like a nice subtle flash. And then the last effect I'm gonna show you is basically uh, the head tracking effect. I've done a video on this before, way back in the day, it was a popular video I made. But uh, so one thing I like to do is I like to create a solid. I don't like to use the motion track, so I hit control Y. This red solid's fine, I'm gonna scale it all the way down. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit, right in the center of the frame. I may even scale it down to 10. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard. I'm gonna turn that opacity down to 50. And then, so like after that effect happens, we're gonna try and keep his head in the center of the frame. Um, I'm gonna lock this adjustment layer so when I move it, it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna use page up and page down on my keyboard. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just keyframe his head the entire time. And then like, let's say if I eventually wanna zoom out, I just have to come here and I have to hit all three of these and then I can zoom out. And then we'll just keep following him. See, we're pushing forward. So even right here, I could do it again. I could go like that and I could zoom out even more. That's kind of scary, but it's kind of cool at the same time, right? And we'll keep his head in the center, go a little fast. And then I'll probably just zoom in right here. I don't need to create um, those. Sometimes I like to also just like follow the hands. Um, just like kind of mix up the motion, you know, he's kind of doing that. So try and match the movement, you know? All right, let's play that through. So with, make sure obviously you have motion blur turned on. So that's gonna really sell this effect. And then you get this crazy warping head effect, right? Or this, you get this really cool motion blur head tracking effect. We've all seen it, um, but that's the way I like to do it in After Effects. It, it's honestly the easiest that way. So one easy thing that you can do to elevate these is throwing on assets from like Cinepax or anywhere else you get your assets. We have tons of free assets on Cinepax.com that you can use. So I have these Ember assets right here from our fire effects. And these are some of my favorite assets here. They, I feel like they just add a lot to anything. We have some free samples on the site if you wanna use them. Uh, these are vertical, these are horizontal. So we either have to scale up or rotate them 90 degrees. Um, actually, let's just see what it looks like if I rotate it 90. Scale that up to 4K, boom. And then we wanna change this to either add or screen. So if there's a specific section, maybe this like last little section we want. And that's a little crazy. So what I would do is I'd scale that up and I just maybe bring it to the side, bring it up to the top here. That's pretty cool. Let's just do that. And then one thing that we can do with it as well is I like to add like a Lumetri on there, curves, and I would change the hue of it. You know, maybe we had red. So you can see right there, it took not that much work and we have some cool, you know, Ember effects already on. So Cinepax assets and just assets in general are a great way to add these into your clips to kind of spice them up. The last few final touches I put on this once you do your whole clip is I would create another adjustment layer and I would go ahead and throw on a radial blur 
and I would actually turn it off real quick and I would hit G on my keyboard. I'm gonna make a quick mask. Make sure you have that adjustment layer selected. Oh, we wanna turn, turn back on the eyeball. Let's turn this down to like 2.5. We could even go three and then add one more adjustment layer. Um, because we have a mask, this won't work. So we need a new adjustment layer. And I would add just like a vignette, a little just to darken the edges a little bit, get the viewer to focus on the center. Uh, so let's play that through and see what that's looking like. So that's pretty much it. You can definitely shoot these instead of music videos. I think it's a really, I think it's a really cool thing that you can offer to artists instead of doing music videos to see even if the song is worth shooting a music video for, right? If it's not going viral and it's not doing numbers, why shoot an entire music video for it, right? I actually did another video where I kind of talked all about shooting these clips and how I actually had one go viral for this artist, John Mack. The video did 6 million views on Instagram and it shot him from 20,000 followers to 120,000 followers. I'm gonna link that one up there. So go check that video out. I think it has a lot of value or go check out the podcast too. I got that link down below with Dr. Clips. I'm Tyler Casey. Hopefully I'm gonna be on YouTube a lot more. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.